Oh, shit. Andy, your mic. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, are our levels okay? Oh, no. Are they okay? Chat. Uh, Tell us if they're okay. Yeah. Oh, we've already lost people. Oh, we... get, get your friends to stay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them that if they leave that you're going to, um, I don't know, like not be friends with them. Good call, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Kevin. I'm Andy. Uh, and welcome to the April 22nd Comedy Show Spectacular. Uh, I realized the other day that today is Earth Day, and we could have uh, marketed this show around Earth Day. You you texted me that um yesterday or today or something, and I actually, I realized that like like right when we started playing this, I realized that it was Earth Day, and I just didn't feel a need to say anything. So I know that it has been earth day okay. today thanks andy i just i i didn't find it super important but you know what is super important uh we're also uh raising uh money for charity uh tonight uh we're gonna be raising money for the sylvia rivera law project they're a great organization that helps uh trans people of color with legal services uh if you just hit up my venmo uh with any money uh i'll be sending it to them uh after the show this is not a scheme uh whatsoever i promise this is not going into it's all it's gonna be in kevin's pocket for maybe like 15 minutes and then it'll be in the project's pocket yes yes i am not funding uh, my next uh, indie feature film uh, with this money. They're not going to take a little off the top. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. Now, folks, you might be wondering, Kevin and Andy together? Friends? I think we look pretty equally weird, but um, we are friends. Yes. It, it is now canon that me and Andy our friends and we both mm -hmm. went to college together we and did we weren't really friends in college no we didn't hate each other we we just there was a we would either say hi when we passed each other or we just didn't yeah exactly yeah, yeah. and we actually had a very nice chat last saturday mm -hmm. planning for this like we were like okay let's plan for this event and that took like 10 minutes and then for the next like five hours afterwards the two of us just hung out we just we just shot shit and talked about every single connection mm -hmm. that we had at purchase. There were a lot. Yeah, of there, connections. there was quite a lot. Mutual, mutual connections that I didn't even know you knew of people. Like it got kind of scary at yeah. points. I'll be completely honest. We found out that we had the no. same grandparents. <laughs> oh right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I thought. <laughs> Good, uh, good call there. You thought I was going to name names. Yeah, I thought, <laughs> I thought you were going to say something uh, specific that we have in common. Uh, but uh, one of the things uh, that Andy and I uh, have in common is that we are very good friends with one uh, Jessica Gordon. Uh, I uh, met Jessica. I finally keep on calling her Jessica. I met Jess at Purchase, and you've known Jess since high school. Yeah, we dated for three years. Right? I was not going to mention that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought that was knowledge that we were going to talk. You told me right before the show. You were going to, you told me right before the show, you said, I'm going to say it all. <laughs> and now I'm in trouble for know, saying that. I was just trying to, okay. just trying to guess. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so, uh, funny enough, uh, we've actually got uh, Jess in the call with us tonight. Uh, and we're going to play a little game uh, with Jess. Jess, Hello. would you like to take it away? Why is it like a secret that, that we dated? We cannot. I, is that we something? That's how we, that's how you guys know each other. So, Wait, only sorry. you can hear her. Oh, shit. Yeah, you can't hear <laughs> Jess right, at all right now. Oh, uh, no. Shit. Should I can say anything right now? Oh, crap. Give me one second. I, I mean, okay. we, I can hear her now. I can make it better, though. Okay. I was hello. Uh, okay, just speak. Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Okay, cool. Can you both okay. hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. You're welcome. No, I'm just kidding. But yes, you're welcome. Um, so we're gonna play a little game here. <laughs> yes, I feel like I'm coming at you already. Sorry. No, no, please. Go on. Jess is going to ask us questions, and we're going to see who knows her better. Yeah. So 
just so we're clear, the person I've known for seven years slash dated for three of me. those years, or or the the, oh. the lovely person who I've known for five years now, very intimately, I went to school with. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, you ready? These get a little personal, but I, I I think they're good. I think you're gonna know some of them. I don't think you're gonna know all of them, so it's a real test, okay? Okay. No okay. pressure. Um, okay, first question. During my first week of college at Purchase, I unfortunately got blackout drunk and proceeded to throw up where exactly in my freshman year dorm room? Where? Oh, I know. What? Wait. Um, Wait. I knew you did it outside the dance building. I. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That was that was the next day. That was, hey, that gives you a point. Okay. Cool. But that okay. wasn't the answer. But that <laughs> night, that <laughs> night in my freshman year dorm room, you know, you both know this story. So. Was it on? Oh, what? I know this. I, I know the answer. Yeah, um, you say it. No, I was just. I was. I, I was gonna be like, was it in the trash can? It was on your room. It was house. not. No, it wasn't. What the? Wait, what story you am guys, I thinking of? That is not a story of mine. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, the okay. answer is, the answer is, I was in a loft bed, so it was out onto the window, down the blinds, and onto the floor, <laughs> and, and on my bed, and I apologize to both my roommates every time I see them. So sorry, oh. you guys. I can't, I have 100% told you both that. Anyway, Do I get so strike one. one. You get a half point, Kev. Okay. Okay. Andy, you weren't even gonna try that one. I really had no okay. idea. What's the next, next question? Next question. Next question. You definitely know the answer to this. Can you describe one instance? There is multiple in which I broke my toe slash foot. Either of you. You broke your toe in my hallway. Upstairs describe in the my instance. hallway. You slammed it against the door. Yes. Okay. One point. I, okay. I thought you were going to explain more, but that's fine. Go ahead. I Has this happened in the past five years of me knowing you at all? <laughs> yeah, it has. You don't remember me walking around with a boot for two months? Uh, I thought that was just uh, a new look of yours. Okay. Didn't you like fall on set or something? No? no. Never mind. Okay. Okay. Well, that, Andrew was right. That was one of them. Damn it. The other time was like drunk at purchase and I set off my fire alarm and I fell down the stairs in front of all oh, of the alumni village. That. Yeah. I yeah. Forgot about that, that was when I thought you were. Whatever. Okay. So, Kevin, you're at half point. Andy, you're at one point. Okay. 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 How long did I have to wear headgear for growing up? I, in parentheses, I put, I wore this to bed overnight and on the weekends when I was hanging out with my friends. But for how many years did I have to do that for? 12? No. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say four. <laughs> I'm only 23. <laughs> it was five. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have a point. Have a point. Okay. 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 So we're tied, tied right now. now. You're tied okay. now. Now, just. 12 years? I'm 22. I so just either at I just spat out a number. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Jess, is, is, question. Since Andy Kevin, and I are tied, yeah. can we make this next one the final question? I think that might make things. Oh uh, God. Here. I have I have one that I think you're either both gonna. I think you might both get it wrong, or uh, I'm not sure. Let's, Let's go hear it. Let's hear one. it. When is my birthday? G uh, June uh, June eighth. Yeah, June June eighth. Okay, I'm going to ask another question because yeah. Kev just repeated Andrew. No, okay, okay, but I'll yes, you're right, honest. Andrew. I'll be completely honest. The June 9th went through my head. It, I, I thought June 9th in my head before Andy said June Okay, 9th. I'll ask the last question and that'll tie it up, okay? Okay. okay. Um, have I ever been to Disney World? And if so, <laughs> when? Like, what occasion was that? Yes, and it was right after your parents uh, were... <laughs> uh, well, it's, it was during the separation. It was right after I win. <laughs> okay, yeah, you yeah. Win. okay. I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, word. That okay. Could have, okay. That could have ended a lot more horribly. That is a fantastic story. I totally forgot about that. Jess, thank you. Thank oh, you so much. so much. Thanks for stopping by. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Yeah.
Okay, back to Andy and I. So, so that went pretty horribly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's literally in the right next. The I know. Next she, right yeah. Yeah. I was like, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> she's right there. Look Can I introduce it. our first act? Um, sure. Um, who's first? Of me, okay. Our first act is a really good friend of mine. Uh, she's really funny. Um, l- let's give it up for Mia Sanchez. Ooh. Hi, Mia. Mia, I you're you're muted, unfortunately. <laughs> there we go. Oh, yeah. I had to just text me at the same time saying I was muted. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay. Uh, let's do a restart. We love a good embarrassing moment to a routine. Um. <laughs> Okay. Uh, since living in quarantine, I've been in quarantine for since this whole thing started. I've been living at home with my family, uh, and I have a 16-year-old brother. And my my living with my brother is like reliving what it's like to be 16 all over again. Um, and I think it's hilarious. I think it is so funny watching the struggle of trying to find yourself now being 23 is so good. It's so funny to watch. I feel so bad. But at the same time, when you're 16, you don't listen to anybody else. You think you're in the right. So even if I say anything, he just won't listen. He'll think he's in the right. Um, but it, it just also just so that you can get a picture of what he's like. Um, my brother is like, I want to say almost six foot, you know, Puerto Rican, pretty built. Um, he's been into something called, uh, scam rap recently. Um, yeah, I, I also don't know what that really is. He tried to educate me. Uh, he showed me a four minute and 20 second song. Uh, a man teaching you how to scam people lyric by lyric. Um, and through this phase, he also is going through the phase of being a 16 year old boy and thinking that you can make it as a rapper, um, which I think everyone, not everyone, only men, I think, go through. Uh, but he's also insecure. I, we're all insecure at 16. And, uh, and so he will make us leave the house so that he can do his rap lyrics and rap because he's a little insecure. Thus making me go on being a third wheel on my own parents' date and eating sushi with them in a parking lot. So, I mean, the trials and tribulations, you know what I mean? Um, But, you know, me and him have a fairly fairly good relationship with each other um i taught him i taught him what it was how do i put it i basically helped raise him and so i taught him uh how to be potty trained now as a as a woman teaching a man how to potty train and only being a few years older at the time uh i didn't know how men peed so I took a guess. So when I trained him to pee, I told him, no, you don't have to hold your penis when you pee in a toilet. And you also have to wipe afterwards. Uh, and so because of that, for years and years and years, he would pee and it would go everywhere. and. 
also go to stalls and wipe, and no one really said anything until he was like 13 years old, and my dad and him were in a Costco bathroom, and he watched my man pee all over the urinal and all over the floor, and then walk into the stall, wipe. Um, and I think that will always be his biggest regret is knowing that he had to wipe after he peed. And I think there's still a little resentment towards me uh, to this day. And uh, I think that's about it for my set. Uh, thank you guys so much. Don't forget to donate to the uh, to Kevin's Venmo for the foundation. Thank you so much. And good luck to everyone else performing. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you, Mia. Thanks, Mia. Oh, wait, your mic's not on because I turned it off. Oh, you turned my mic off? Yeah, well, because it's my turn to do stand-up now. Oh, it is. Yeah. Goodbye. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's Kevin's time to do stand-up. Um, I'd first like to uh, address the elephant in the room here. Um, yes, we are broadcasting tonight's show from my middle school YouTube channel. Uh, where you can find such favorite videos as uh, a Toby Turner vlog from 2012 or the Seinfeld series finale alternative ending or a mashup of uh, Nothing on You slash Beautiful Girls slash Kids by MGMT. That was my shit when I was in middle school. Um, but so yeah, I'm just going to reintroduce myself, even though you guys already know who I am, probably. Uh, my name is Kevin. I'm 22 years old. My pronouns are they, them, and I am cursed to live in Westchester County for all of existence. And I know what you're thinking. You're probably wondering yourself, Kevin, uh, I, I didn't know you were a fag. <laughs> but you also might be wondering, <laughs> Kevin, what is this curse that you're talking about? And I'll, I'll explain it real quick. Uh, so I've lived in Westchester my whole entire life. I'm from a town called East Chester. I've lived there forever. And then I went to school at SUNY Purchase, just like everybody else uh, watching the news on the bill, which is just a 20 minute drive from my house. So I spent my whole entire life in Westchester thus far. That's one level of this curse. The second level is my parents who both also lived in Westchester their whole entire lives and continue to do so. And then the same then applies to my dad's parents and then those parents before them and those parents before them and so on and so forth. I once asked my dad, I said to him, dad, how long have the Wingertsons been in Westchester for? And he turned around and he stared me down and said, Kevin, if I had any idea, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> That's the second layer of this curse. The third layer has to do with my paternal grandfather, who I never met. He died a few months before I was born, so I don't really know a lot about him, but I always thought that he passed away from having cancer of the esophagus. And it just turns out that's just a fun little unrelated thing that I get to look forward to later on in life. No, the way that he died <laughs> went like this. My paternal grandfather had a heart attack while buying a Metro North train ticket, which is the most Westchester way to die possible. Polo shirt, khaki shorts, Birkenstocks, flat dead on the ground of the Bronxville train station. <laughs> it doesn't get more Westchester than that in your death. The only death that could be more Westchester-y is if uh, you died eating uh, uh, candlelight in wings while riding the Playland Dragon Coaster. And if you're from Westchester, you know that reference is far more true than it is funny. Any, uh, so Playland, if you don't know, is this amusement park that's uh, in Westchester. It's in Rye and it's really old. And while doing research for this bit, I stumbled upon a, upon a Fox News article that cited Rye Playland as the second most dangerous amusement park in the whole entire country. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but I wholeheartedly agree with Fox News. That place is super dangerous. Like six people have died there before uh, in its existence. And you know what? I fucking love it. I love that place so much. I love that place so much. I had my 21st birthday party there. There's no joke there. That's just a straight up fact. Uh, it's weird and it's grimy and it's gross. And it's all surface level with it too. 
But what's weird is that no Westchester, Westchester residents really identify all those factors about it, even though, like I said, it's pretty surface level. Um, another place like that in Westchester that I feel like people don't acknowledge the weirdness of is the Westchester County Center, the, the cultural hub of Westchester, if you will, where the only acts that they feature are either the Reptile Exposition or WWE Live. And you know I've had front row seats for both. <laughs> I love living in Westchester. and I, But I, I, the thing that I love about living in Westchester is seeing all this weird shit. And I only am able to see that weird shit from having lived there for 22 years. Uh, and even though I love seeing that weird shit so much, I want to get the fuck out of there so badly. <laughs> so badly. And I will. I will. Because I'm saying it right now, I will leave Westchester someday. No matter how much the ghost of my paternal grandfather haunts me and torments me and the hopes that I buy an off-peak Harlem Line Metro North train ticket. That's my time. Uh, thank you for listening to me stammer on about Westchester. Our next act is somebody, I've been very conscious in the fact that I'm introducing this next person because whenever I've introduced them in the past, I always set them up so much. I do way too much work. I always say, this is the funniest person in the whole entire world. I've done that multiple times whenever I've set up this person and I have to stop doing that. So folks, here is the least funniest person to have ever lived, Laura Brown. Come in! Bye, Laura. This. <laughs> I'm, uh, this is, this is, uh, I'm making a, a vow to all of you watching. I'm going to get Kevin. I'm I'm gonna get them. Uh, <laughs> so hi guys. Uh, here's the thing about me. I'm an artist. Uh, in addition to being a comedian and a whole slew of other things, I can assure you none of my talents are lucrative. Uh, the really fun thing about being an artist is that no one respects you. People love to look at art, but God, they really, really hate the people making it. Um, this one time I posted my commission prices and this guy did something really, really cool. Uh, he ignored them and he sent me a message asking, hey, what can I get for five bucks? What is this, a fucking deli counter? I'll tell you what you can get for five bucks, my disdain. Or a bacon, egg and cheese. Still, I like doing art. My favorite thing to draw is people because aren't they funny looking guys? And to get better at drawing people, I took a figure drawing class a few years back, you know, the kind with live nude models. Now, whenever I told any like real adults, like aunts, uncles, friends, parents that I was doing this, their response was always like, ooh, like I was a pervert, but they were kind of into it. They really thought I was speaking in code and art class stood for Roman bath orgy. It was amazing actually watching the switch happen in conversation because I'd be talking about an art class and they'd be like, oh, that's nice, like a little bored. And then as soon as I said the words nude model, they were like, oh, you're a sex maniac. Ah, oh, congratulations. Have fun, you crazy slut. Oh, they thought I was a little hedonist. Like I was somehow fucking the models while drawing them, which is really overselling my talents. That would be really, really cool, but I am not that good at multitasking. Uh, when I told people my age that I was taking this class, their reactions were basically the same. I will never forget talking to one friend about it. And he was like, oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. So you're drawing dicks, huh? As though that would be the only part that I would draw? Can you imagine that? I walk in, I pull my chair up, I sit right up front next to the model and I'm like, hey buddy, can you, can you widen your spread a little bit? I gotta get a better angle. Oh, thank you, that's perfect. This lighting is fantastic, thank you. Really makes it shine. And speaking of dicks, do you guys remember sex ed? Because I do. My high school sex ed program wasn't abstinence only, it was abstinence preferred. 
which basically meant that they would tell us about sex, but they would do it so begrudgingly. The teacher would walk into class like, don't you dare have sex. If you have sex, you'll get pregnant, you'll ruin your life, everyone will fucking hate you. Also, here's a dental dam and how to use it. The main way that they tried to dissuade us from having sex was by talking to us a lot about STDs. And you know how they taught us about STDs? They showed us a movie, nay, a film from the Lifetime Network, a little indie darling called She's Too Young. Now, She's Too Young is the story of a good Christian girl, as most Lifetime movies are, whose best friend is, unfortunately, a trollop, a salacious wench who teaches her about the pleasures of the flesh. This causes our dear protagonist to become a whore who gives her entire school syphilis. That's it. That's the whole movie. And you know what? Girl boss behavior. What an enterprising young lady. There is this great scene in the movie where she goes into the guidance counselor's office and the guidance counselor is like, we need to know how many sexual partners have you had? And the girl is like, hang on. And like, like she, she, it seems like she's being really emotional. And the guidance counselor is like, it's okay, take your time. I know this is hard. And the girl turns back and she's like, I'm counting. <laughs> what? <laughs> this girl is the best. Like, listen, I know giving the whole school syphilis was kind of a dick move, but come on. If they didn't want us to side with her, then they shouldn't have made her such a bad bitch. Sex ed was not the only time my school system let me down. In middle school gym, a phrase that triggers everyone fight or flight response, uh, they separated us into boys and girls and they had the boys play boy sports and the girls play girl sports. Now this was misogynistic and transphobic and all different kinds of fucked up for a variety of reasons, but it did result in a whole unit of class where the girls were doing step aerobics and the boys were doing competitive cup stacking. What kind of ass backwards gender roles were they trying to instill there? That's not even stereotypical, that's just weird. Can you imagine somebody's conservative dad being like, now, Mary Jean, you know you'll never stack those cups like the boys can. Your dainty feminine hands are far too small to grip them properly. Now go, go rhythmically step on a box with your sisters the way a real woman should. And see him. I kind of like Seperovics. It was a really bizarre outlet for all of my teenage rage. I know logically that we did step aerobics to a whole bunch of songs, but I only remember doing it to Cascada's seminal classic, Every Time We Touch. To this day, every time I hear that song, muscle memory kicks in and I immediately have to find the nearest set of stairs and go a little ape shit. And every time we kiss, I swear I can fly. Thank you guys so much. That's it for me. Remember to donate and thank you to all the other performers. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Laura Brown, everybody. Downtown Laura Brown. Bye, Laura. Bye. Um, cool. I went to that high school. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, which makes you very good friends with our next uh, yeah. performer. Yeah. I met. I met this next guy um, when I did tech for Shrek the Musical. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> we really hit it off. Um, give it up for um, my best friend, Sebastian Maroon. Oh, Andy! Hey! Hey, Kevin, what's going on? Hey. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh, what's going on, guys? Uh, COVID-19, am I right? It's kind of fucked up. Anybody get the vaccine? Yeah, good, good, good. You know, I, I actually helped uh, develop the the COVID nineteen vaccine. Well, not not directly. I uh, I was part of an improv team for Pfizer in two thousand one. Uh, it's actually a pretty sweet gig. Yeah, I mean, like um, they didn't give us like a lot of creative freedom, but they paid us in pills, so like nobody complained. 
it, it was weird though because the only thing that we had to do was that we were like legally obligated to plug a Pfizer product at least once each scene. So like a lot of the scenes would be like, uh, "Hey man, uh, I'm with this girl and I can't get it up. Can you bring me a Viagra? Where am I? I'm at the White House." Or like, oh man, my baby's been crying all day. My head hurts. Yes, and I could really use an Advil. Or like, wah, wah, I'm a baby and I want my mommy. And boy, I sure wish I had a Zoloft right now. Zoloft, it's good for babies. 13 babies overdosed after that show. <sighs> There I go again, <laughs> reminiscing about good times at live shows. <laughs> Remember live shows? Yeah, me too. You know, I'm actually glad that live shows are not happening anymore. Yeah, I said it. Don't get me wrong. I mean, like, live shows are fun to do, uh, but there are just some things that you can get away with online that you can't live. Like, right now, I'm performing at a completely different show on another tab. Uh, hold on. Hey, Tampa Bay, how we doing tonight? Go Rays. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, I'm just a little jaded uh, because I've had just like the worst luck at live shows recently. Uh, it's starting to actually piss me off. <laughs> you, you know the comedy seller? Yeah, well, I got booked for the comedy attic, okay? What the fuck is the comedy attic, right? Anyway, they sent me a text saying that they uh, they loved my set last night and uh, they'd love to have me back that night. I've never been to the Comedy Attic. I I've never even heard of the Comedy Attic, okay? Uh, so I, I started calling everybody when I got that text to ask if they knew about the Comedy Attic or, or if they had seen me at the Comedy Attic I just blacked out or something. Not one person. So I'm starting to think that the Comedy Attic is not a real place. So I, I text them back and uh, I say, well, I think there's been a miscommunication. I've never performed at the Comedy Attic. And frankly, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And immediately they respond. Uh, but listen, Sebastian, we've, we've seen all your stuff and we think you're very, very, very funny. Uh, we think you're going to be the next big thing. Well, now that I think about it, I may have heard about the Comedy Attic a couple of times. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where uh, Dave Chappelle got his start. Yeah, so I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying to pass that one up just yet. Uh, so, so I, I take the gig. Yeah, I took it. And uh, they told me to come alone and, and to come with a positive attitude. I love it, love it, love it. So I, I hop on the Metro North and I'm practicing my bits out loud on the train, making sure that everyone knows that I just got booked to the Comedy Attic. <laughs> Finally, I, I get to White Plains and, uh, yeah. Uh, the Comedy Attic is in White Plains, so, which is still technically New York City. So when I get to the building, uh, it, it's huge. It's like 100 stories. Now, like I don't remember them building a giant skyscraper that big in White Plains, but there it was. And uh, <laughs> so I turned. I, I get to the building, and I, I turn to the bouncer who's outside. And he's, he's, nice, he's a nice big fellow dressed in black. And I, I say to him, well, uh... That must be why they call it the Comedy Attic. He stabbed me. Yeah, I, I hit the floor and boom, I'm out. Woke up like three, four hours later in the gallery of bathroom and my, my money is gone, my material is gone, and both my kidneys are gone. Can you believe that? That guy took my material. God, you know how long it takes me to write this shit? <laughs> he, he's probably at the Comedy Attic right now. Doing this bit. God, and I bet it's killing, too. I should go over there. No. No. Uh, see, this is the reason why I, I think that, that being a comedian is the hardest job in the world. Uh, like, no other profession, profession has to, like, put up with that shit. Like, oh, oh, I know you're going to say, oh, what about nurses and, and frontline workers? Oh, uh, their jobs are pretty hard, actually. Duh, duh. Shut up. You know how stupid you sound when you say that? I work hard too, okay? At least nurses get the vaccine, you know? And I, I, you, you don't think I work as hard as them? I, I, I have two sets at the comedy attic tomorrow night. Where's my vaccine? 
you know, no, no, no other profession ha has to watch themselves slowly get jokerfied like comedians. We live in a society. Sorry. Uh, kind of in a weird place right now. Uh, I just, I don't know. I haven't been feeling like myself recently. And uh, I, I think I'm losing it. I'm depressed. Or at least I was until I tried Zoloft. Zoloft, give it to your baby. It's good for them. All right, that's all the time I have for today. You can, if you like this, you can check out my other stand-up on my OnlyFans. I'll be opening up for a gangbang next Friday. All right, thank you guys very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. Uh, uh, hopefully the other guys don't get joker fried. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bye, Sebastian. Uh, Classic Sebastian. Classic Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> I was on Soloft for a while. Fun fact about me. Just a reminder to donate <laughs> the Sylvia Rivera Law Project tonight. That's what we're raising money for. Uh, pretty much, if you're doing a show nowadays, just it doesn't hurt to raise some money while you're doing it, folks. Okay. And so, like I said before, Venmo uh, me, and I'll take care of the rest uh, later on. Our uh, next act is uh, a friend of all. Uh, he is the president of suny purchase i think i'm pretty sure i got that right he runs that shit yes <laughs> uh and i he's not the president he's the supreme ruler of suny purchase and it, i don't know if the supreme ruler knows if he's going oh okay there's the there supreme ruler okay <laughs> folks we got fucking nick astor in the building hey nick Woo! hey andy hey kevin hi okay bye bye well, this is awkward. I came here to ditch PLN, and then all of PLN came here. Y'all don't deserve to be here. Y'all don't deserve to be in that group chat. You took that group chat away from me. I'm going to take it from you now. Goodbye. And y'all too cheap to donate. If not, you can prove me wrong. Prove me wrong right now. Kevin, put the, put the link. Can Kevin, maybe Kevin, yeah, there you go. Oh, donate right now. Are you a little bitch? Um... Oh, it even rotates, you see? I get the premium quality. Um, but you know what? I don't know how to say this. You know what? I feel like it could be honest. I hate kids. Like, kids are so cocky. Like, I was reading an article the other day, and it was like, for kids under 12, it's like the Pfizer vaccine is like a hundred percent effective what kind of shit is that that's the co like they're such cocky bastards like i could take all three vaccines and they just be like what are you doing i can't just like i'm just trying to get to 100 percent, man trying to get to 100 percent. but like if you think about it like they don't even need the vaccine like the things they do the kids are just insane like I've seen a kid like eat sand and eat dirt. Like it's like when you, the shitty Chinese place in their neighborhood, they'll just like eat it, like switch around their mouth, pick up the phone and be like, yeah, Sarah, like it was okay. Like Kevin was really hyping it up, but like it was a little too crunchy for me. And like the boogers, and the bugs were like a little undercooked. And it's like, if you, if you could eat all that shit, you could do basically anything. Like, have you ever seen the way that kids deal with pain? It's the most insane thing on the entire planet. Like I've seen a kid like fly off of the swing like a hundred feet in the air and just like eat total shit. And then they'll just get back up. They'll, they'll be a little that frazzled, whatever. Um, but, but all you have to do is go, bah! And then they just look at you and they're like, you are correct. Thank you for reminding me that physical pain is only temporary. Now, put me back on the swing. Like, imagine, like, I can't do that. Like, 
I have too much baggage. You can't do that. You definitely have too much baggage. At this point, we're too jaded to do that. Like, imagine, like, if you just, like, walked into a public bathroom and, like, someone was just, like, bawling, like, excessively, and then they just looked in the mirror and they went, bah! Like, and, like, if you saw that person, run. Like, that person has nothing to lose at this point. Um, like, I, but I feel like, um, I feel like little kid society is like what we should strive for. It's it's kind of hard to explain, but like they have really good morals. Like, for example, um, the kid, I don't know if it was like this in your elementary school, but for me, the kid who was like the most elite person was a person who could just like eat the most like fruits and vegetables or like eat the, all the shit that nobody wanted. So like, I remember there's this kid, Alex, and like, we were pretty wasteful kids, not very Earth Day friendly, Earth Day plug over there. Um, and we would like not eat the oranges and the apples, the milk, whatever. And like, one day Alex was just like, fuck it. I bet I could eat every apple on the, you know, on the whole like lunch table. And he just, just started like six, 12, 18 apples. He would just like kill it. And like, he fully became our leader. Like, we would just, like, they'd be like, should we do our math homework? would be like, let's talk to Alex. would be like, Alex says it's fine. Like, she doesn't trick math on Tuesday. And it's like, you sure? Like, I'm not doing so hot. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex put, like, three apples in his mouth at once. Like, he knows this shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go, go. Um, like, imagine if, like, um, if like presidential campaigns were decided by that, like there'd be one guy on stage and be like, I believe that nobody should be able, has to tie their shoes. We could just tuck them on the side of our shoes and I could fit three muffins in my mouth at once. And everybody would be like, oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then the lady next to would be like, my opponent is lying to you. The tucking in your shoelaces trick never works. Um, they always come off, and you're going to end up tripping on them anyways. If I'm president, everybody's going to get Velcro shoes. And then we're like, oh, shit. And then the Velcro shoe lady wins because, like, it's just elite. Um, very utilitarian, very to the point. But, you know, not every one of us could be, like, innocent and just, like, be perfect children forever. and like. Sadly, even Alex had his downfall. Like, I remember it was, like, the principal's birthday in uh, elementary school, and, like, some PTA parent really wanted to show off. And so they bought every kid, I think, from the second grade to the fifth grade, they bought them giant muffins the size of a toddler's head. And we were all so hyped. We were like, oh, we each get a huge muffin uh, or a huge cupcake, um, and we're just going to kill this shit. But nobody could do it. But, of course, the shining beacon of hope that he is, Alex was like, don't worry, guys. I got this. And so Alex starts, like, eating one huge cupcake. He's like, oh, I don't feel so good. So he's like, keep going, keep going. Two, he's like, oh, he's, he's starting to sweat. He's like profusely sweating. And it's like three, uh, kind of three and a half. And he's like down for the count. He's just like sweating, um, sweating ever since. He's just like sweating in the nurse's bench. And he's like, Alan, he can't eat everything. And he just, he just lost it. He wasn't the same. Like, he just like, was like, I need to keep going. And then he just kept eating. He kept eating, kept eating. And the sugar high just got to him, man. The sugar high just got to him. And you want to know what? He got COVID. So, you know, it can't be always 100% effective your whole life. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. Make sure to donate on the bottom or you're uh, a little wimp. Kevin will flash it up again later um 
and have a good night. Thank you, Nick. Thanks, Nick. Woo! Woo! Oh, Nick has left the building. Okay. Okay. Bye, Nick. Bye, Nick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now Nick's waving down low. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here now because it's Andy's turn. Bye. That's my intro for Andy. <laughs> I needed Kevin to do the technical stuff. Andy, everybody. <laughs> Thank Woo! you. Woo! Okay. Yeah, do what you need to do. Bye. Okay. All right. So you guys know how like a few years ago they grew a human ear like off of a mouse? I feel like I look like you grew like a human body like off of a chia pet off of like Mr. Potato's like fucking nose. <laughs> um, I literally had a panic attack the other day just like looking at myself in the mirror. I was so disappointed in what i saw um and i've been like really thinking about that like i do think i have um a bad perception of how i look and a lot of it has come into like um come into play um recently because i actually learned that my um bio biological father is was a sperm donor um so the dad that i grew up with wasn't my um biological dad and um immediately uh when my when i was told this i was like no fucking shit that makes complete fucking sense of course um as you can see um looking at me i am really really jewish i have hair that goes every direction for like a mile um and i i my mannerisms are very like jewish like and i'm the only one in my family like this we're, we, I was raised Jewish. Everyone's Jewish, but I literally feel like I grew up in a family full of goys. Like it's, it's nuts. Like they're all like into NASCAR and shit. Like they all wear like cargo shorts. I'm, I'm literally. This is what came out. So I'm, I like, I have this idea of my sperm donor father as just this like, really just like nebishi jew who just like walked into a like a sperm bank he's like oh it's it's the sperm bank i had a i had an eight o'clock appointment um but i'm i'm a half an hour early can you see me now um and then they're like uh yeah sure um and then uh they're like here's some magazines if you want he's like oh um, okay um so <laughs> i just like i I don't, I genuinely don't understand, like, what, what, who was filling out these applications? Like, who was going through these applications of potential sperm donors? Because I'm, before any of this, I applied to be a sperm donor. I didn't know that I was the product of one, and I applied to be one, and they told me I was too short. So I'm just really curious, like, why was this guy approved this fucking short fucking guy with IBS? Like, why did he get through the system? I really don't know. I also uh, feel like I look like I was bred to increase New Balance sales. Um, And I also feel like I look like somebody you would call buddy but like in a demeaning way like i feel i have a very mixed feeling about being called buddy um because it can go either way like if somebody calls me buddy i the way i feel about it, it's like yeah i am your buddy we we can be buds but like the person who calls you buddy is like always like bigger than you and like probably more attractive than you and just like taller than you and just like probably like like probably doesn't have ibs like probably just has his shit together um and so i feel like it's demeaning i feel like they're trying to tell me that they're better than me and i don't really i don't really like that um i also um I also have been um, taking, um, uh, is anyone here on antidepressants? You can put it in the chat. Put it in the chat if you're on antidepressants. 
let's see what we got here. There's a bit of a delay. There's a bit of a delay. Um. I feel like, uh, like if you are on antidepressants, like I feel like what you're taking, uh, is like, like says a lot like about you. Like I feel like it's our, it's like depressed people's own version of like astrology. Like, like yeah, um, <laughs> I'm on, I'm I'm like a Zoloft rising and a Lexapro moon. Anyway, guys, that's my time. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to get Kevin back over here. Um, and we're going to introduce our next act. Are we going to uh, say uh, at the same time who the person is? Yes, so, let's okay. do it. Three, two, one. Sarah. Sarah Gunn. Yay. That was so good. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, Sarah. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Um, yeah. Hi. So, oh, wait, God, why is my internet so bad? One second, everybody. Okay, here I am. Um, yeah. Hi. So I'm currently uh, living at home with my parents. I moved back here in November after completely running out of money. Um, I'm actually currently in my childhood bedroom. So um, keep that in mind as I absolutely unload family trauma onto all of you um, because my parents are actually right downstairs while this is happening. Um, and, you know, it's it's been good to spend more time with family, but I've been here for a while and I just keep having this experience of um, remembering what my parents are like. Like, I forgot so much about my parents um, that I am now unfortunately being reminded of things that they do that were only ever dismissed by me, probably because I was a child or um, I forgot after years of being away. And now I'm experiencing them again. But this time as a free thinking adult. And I just don't think we're meant to perceive our parents with a fully developed brain full time. Like, I, I just think it's a dynamic that wasn't meant to happen. Um, like, I forgot how easily my mom can hurt my feelings, um, hurt anyone's feelings. But, um, you know, I, I do think she's a good person. Um, she's supportive in, in the ways that matter. But um, I, I don't think she ever fully developed empathy. Um, like, I think she experiences it to a certain degree, um, but just not, you know, like during casual conversations when she just happens to say something super hurtful to someone, um, you know, when it's important to have empathy. Um, and a few weeks ago, um, I was I was having dinner with her and my dad and there was a lull in the conversation, just a few seconds. Um, and my mom looks up and she looks over at my dad and, and out of nowhere says, Jim. I think you're balding just out of nowhere, which I feel like is an act of violence. You should not be able to just randomly tell a man, especially one as emotionally fragile as my father, that he's balding. I don't care if you wake up one day and it's just magically gone. Also, second important fact, my father, not balding, couldn't even tell what she was talking about. So she's coming after this man's life and she can't even do it with a true statement. And she does this to me too. Um, for some backstory, um, I just signed a lease to live with my girlfriend to continue living in Buffalo. And my mom has been with me like through all of it. Like she went with me to look at apartments. Um, she talked to landlords with me. She drove me to go sign the lease. Um, another very cute aspect of me being home right now is I don't have a car. So my mom is driving me absolutely everywhere, which I think is very charming of me. Um, but anyway, it's, it's a, been a very long process. So of course, the day after I signed the lease, we're having lunch. And she looks up at me and out of the blue says, Sarah, do you feel like you might be making a mistake? What? Which, which, so I asked her what she meant by that. And she said, well, yeah, like, aren't things starting to open back up in the city? I mean, are you making a mistake by staying here? Which like, okay, uh, maybe, but also, Maybe this could have been a conversation two months ago. Um, and it's important to note the evidence she was pointing to that New York City is coming back is that she read an article, already a red flag, read an article saying that Jerry Seinfeld is planning on doing a show in Manhattan soon and that he says comedy is coming back to New York City. Um, you guys know Jerry Seinfeld, right? You know, Jerry, you've heard of Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld, famous for having a hard time booking venues. Like, I, I think it's fair to say that Jerry Seinfeld and me, Sarah Gunn, are on a similar tier of popularity and access to performance space. And 
I know she's just trying to be helpful, uh, but this is the woman who, after I graduated and was frantically looking for a job in Brooklyn, which of course I never found, um, she called me up to ask me if I had ever heard of UCB theater and if I should try giving them a call and asking them for a job. Um, <laughs> so I think I'm just gonna be angry about this until I die. Um, speaking of dying, so is my father. That was a flawless transition. Spam the chat, you know that was good. Um, but yeah, he's dying. Um, not funny. Um, and you know, he's not dying in like an honest deathbed kind of way, more in a, it's finally catching up to him kind of way. Um, my dad is one of those manly men that clearly feels like, um, health and wellness are beneath him. So now after a lifetime of chain smoking for 45 years, he's probably going to die in the most emasculating way possible because that's just what happens to those super burly dudes, you know? They slump over the, on the toilet or they fall down the stairs after refusing assistance or they have a heart attack jerking it. Um, and my dad is definitely one of those guys, um, which is also why it was especially strange to me that my mom brought up balding as a comment, because my father is actively losing teeth and is currently growing a beard that looks like it belongs on Alaskan gold rush. Like maybe we're pointing out the wrong stuff. I don't know. Um, but my dad is such a manly upstate dude that he has now surpassed the need for the English language, like since retiring, my father has started speaking exclusively in grunts and grumbles. Like English is his first and only language. And yet the way he speaks warrants subtitles. Like he will come in for dinner and sit down and just go like, oh, well, 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 did, did you see that? Oh, I'll just nod my head because I have no idea. Like. I, I can understand it sometimes, but I'm mainly going off pure vibes. Like sometimes he'll mumble something and based on its general tone, my response will be something like, oh really? Or yeah, that's crazy. Like my dad and I have like a Chewbacca Han Solo dynamic, but instead of a dude in a, in a fursuit and young Harrison Ford, it's an older man on the verge of cardiac arrest and his small dyke daughter. Um, and I spend way too much time worried about when he's going to die. And I think it's because he spends 90% of his time in his workshop in the garage. I actually think he's out there right now. Um, and he only ever comes in for meals or to sleep on the lazy boy. And so when he doesn't come in for dinner, I get really worried because in my head, there's like a 50-50 shot that he's dead out there. Um, and never before so succinctly have I understood Schrodinger's cat. Like didn't care to like didn't it didn't matter to me, um, but now I do because it it torments me. Inst but now instead of Sch Schrodinger's cat, it's my dad, and um, which which means now that every time he's in the garage, there are two simultaneously existing universes where he is both alive and dead at the same time, and I don't want to live in either one of them. Um, so in short, I have to move out because I can't be 22 and live in this anxiety ridden hellscape that I have designed by my own mind. Um, also, also important fact, um, I cannot be the one to find my dad's body. I've already decided it can't happen until death do us part. That is my mother's job. My mom can find his body. It can't be me. I knew a girl once from church camp who found her dad's body and it's all she ever talked about, which is like, fine. She earned it. She can talk about it, but that can't be me. That can't be my story. When we all go back to parties, like it's just not going to be me. It's not going to be me. Imagine I post on social media tomorrow being like my dad died last night. That'd be pretty funny. Um, uh, anyway, uh, thank you. That's my time. Um, please give Kevin all of your money. Kevin, please rescue me. Okay. Rescue Sarah Gunn. <laughs> hashtag rescue Sarah Gunn. Get it out there. Sarah Gunn, thank you so much. Uh, Bye, Sarah. Bye, thank Sarah. You. Uh, folks, that's our show. Uh um, yeah, we we fucking did it. We did we did the yeah, show. We did it. Hey, yeah. Should we just go into the no, we'll do that off screen. Um yes, please. Final call to send donations for the Sylvia Rivera Law Project. My Venmo is right there. Uh my wa <laughs> my last name. My last name is spelled W-I-N-G-E-R-T-Z-A-H-N. And backwards. <laughs> funny enough, Andy and I a few We have the same <laughs> last name. <laughs> What were you going to say? Nope. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>